a big man scoring 62 in a game and getting benched down the stretch. Carl Anthony Towns, um, he might have, you know, I was texting with Ben Taylor from Thinking Basketball. He said that Carl Anthony Towns may have had the fastest 50 point game in NBA history. I, I'm sure he'll, you know, do a video if that's the case. Uh, but he was hunting. And apparently the story came out that at halftime, the Timberwolves saw what Embiid did and they decided, hey, Cat, how about we get you 70? And they lost to the Charlotte Hornets. In, in a clutch it's game. Changed. In a, in a, in a clutch game. In a clutch game. <laughs> all the way Charlotte wins. Yeah. And Terry Rozier was great in that game, and that was his last game. Am I wrong here for feeling like I'm a little bit out on Minnesota right now? It's unserious. Yeah, thank you. It's it, and and I think that and um you know we've gone round and round on cat and sort of uh you know most point is well taken about Embiid. Uh he does I think to for to be in the level of the conversation he would like to put himself, he does have to do it in the playoffs. That's all true, but the difference between like Embiid and then Cat in terms of of that level of trust is just a, a, a huge margin, and I think this 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 game is is such a perfect encapsulation of that. It's it's everything we're afraid for the Minnesota Timberwolves in the in the playoffs, right? Decision making, being smart, being mature. They kept saying that at the end of the post game press conferences, talking maturity, maturity, maturity. Not a surprise, Mike Conley didn't play that game, and all the maturity went out the fucking window. God. Um, and it's just the uh, all you know, it's all gone in that sense. And I think the uh, thing that's different, the difference between the seventy point game that Embiid had and the sixty two point game that Towns had was Embiid's was in the flow of the offense. It's how they've operated, and then he just dominated. They were gunning for Towns trying to get him everything and the dude ran out of gas and i think that's the important thing there and that took them completely out of their rhythm that took them completely out of their flow they built an 18 point lead and charlotte came storming back in the second in the fourth quarter and a lot of it had to do with the fact that cat was gunning to the point that finch just said screw it i gotta put you on the bench man you're killing us and they weren't even defending and bead was doing all the other things in that game that he played he had like 18 rebounds in that, that that seventy point game, that gets kind of lost in there. It was like eighteen or seventeen, something like that. He was dominant in that game. I no, mean, he was it, all it was, over the place. Yeah. And, and, and five assists, like he was making great passes. He had a beautiful dime to uh, Kelly Oubre underneath the basket on a cut. Like there's a bunch of different things. Cat was gunning, and you could see it when you watched the two. I watched both of those. I broke both of those down on my Twitch stream, and, and just saying, like you can kind of see the difference in that game in that stuff. And I think that was the, uh, the, the difference between the two was one was in the flow of the offense. The other one was gunning for it. And not to say Embiid doesn't gun for things. Oh, He's yeah. continuing I mean, he was, to listen, try this 30 point scoring thing or what? I think the 70 point game was a little bit of gunning. It, it's a, that's Victor women. Yama. I'm going to, I'm going to put him in the basket as many times as I possibly can, but Hey, guess what? It's a great strategy. I, I like they that's work. winning <laughs> basketball. Carl Anthony Towns, and I'm look, I'm not gonna be one of these guys who's like, you're 6'10, why you're shooting all these jumpers. But you're 6'10 and you can dribble and you can do stuff. You don't, you don't have to live and die by the jump shot. As a matter of fact, Carl Anthony Towns, if he had made the same evolution that Joel Embiid has made into a true three-level guy where he's got this mid-range game. So you, you know, you if you guard him at the three-point line, he can get to the mid-range, he can get to the basket. I think we feel differently about him, but also, I mean, it's the defensive end. He doesn't bring any of the intensity that Joel Embiid does. And Joel Embiid brings that intensity against the good teams, the bad teams, and the in-between. And and that's the difference between those two guys. I mean, I just felt like the dichotomy between the 70 game and, and, and the 62-point game was, was fascinating because it's two incredibly talented players, one extremely serious and one that I just I – just, I just don't think he's ever going to win anything. It's his ninth year, and we're talking about maturity. Yeah. And, and we're always going to talk about it. He's just not yeah. mature, dude. It's like well, you said, and, unserious. And it's and and I think that that you know there's a there's a the stat we've talked about a little bit, which is turnovers. Cat had seven. And if you want to look at one of the Achilles heels, I think that the Timberwolves face 
as a as a playoff team is um okay both cat and nas reed like okay for big men they can shoot a little they can put it on the floor the problem is when both of them are very turnover prone when they drive and so this is you know i think it's a is it a skill set thing is it a maturity thing it's some of both but i think that you're going to see in the playoffs that there's going to be a lot of them getting crowded and then trying to dribble into traffic and trying to make a play and and tossing up bad shots or charging or getting picking up a charge or just losing the ball in traffic and i think that that's going to that's going to prove to be something that really gets in the way of of them being able to play the way they would want to play uh in a postseason setting 